With regard to health and safety, there are key points for you to consider. These are compressed air, over-pressurization of blasting pots, abrasive velocity, dust, noise, sparks and electrostatic discharge. Abrasive blasting uses compressed air at a pressure of around 100 psi, 7.03 kilograms per square centimeter, to propel abrasive to the substrate. The air is normally supplied direct to a blasting pot from a compressor or from a fixed air supply on site. Compressed air can be lethal if it penetrates the body. It can rupture internal organs, enter the bloodstream and cause a heart attack. Several well-documented deaths have resulted from misuse of compressed air. You should never play around with a compressed air supply or use it to clean off overalls. Blasting pots are machines that feed an abrasive supply into a stream of compressed air. The blasting pots are pressurized by the compressed air and are therefore built as pressure vessels to internationally recognized standards. They generally have specified working pressures in the 125 to 200 psi range, 8.8 .8 kilograms per square centimeter to 14.05 kilograms per square centimeter and should be tested every two years. Instances where tops have blown off a blasting pot are well documented. As you cannot know if the pot is reliable, you should be cautious and act as if it may fail. If you see blasting pots being operated at excessive pressures, you should inform the blasting supervisor and stay clear of the vicinity. At normal blasting pressures, Abrasive exits a Venturi-type nozzle at around 180 meters per second, 450 miles per hour. At close quarters, a direct hit from the abrasive stream can be lethal. The abrasive should never be directed at anything but the surface being blasted. When you're working near open blasting operations, you should stay clear of the actual blasting and always wear safety glasses or goggles to protect your eyes from stray abrasive particles. Dry abrasive blasting always produces large quantities of dust. The amount depends upon the type and hardness of abrasive used. For example, copper slag abrasive will produce far more dust than garnet. The dust itself will be a mixture of crushed abrasive particles and whatever is on the surface being blasted, usually rust and old paint. The blasting dust may therefore contain toxic or harmful constituents. You're advised to stay clear of open blasting operations to limit your exposure to dust, particularly if silica sand is being used. However, the dust can travel for considerable distances, therefore you should always wear a face mask to prevent dust inhalation. Dry abrasive blasting, as well as slurry blasting, is a very noisy process. Prolonged exposure to it can damage your hearing. You should always wear ear protectors or ear plugs when working near blasting operations. Anyone who has observed blasting in progress at night will have seen the sparks produced when the abrasive strikes the substrate. These sparks still occur when the abrasive mixes with water in the slurry blasting process. There is general agreement within the industry that these sparks do not constitute a hazard because they do not have enough energy to act as an ignition source. However, the flow of the blasting abrasive through the blast hose can build up a large electrostatic charge. If this discharges, it can be dangerous. There is sufficient energy for the spark to ignite solvent vapours or to give the operator a severe electric shock. For this reason, blasting equipment must be properly earthed. Modern blasting hose is earthed through the material of the hose itself. Older equipment may have a separate earthing system running parallel to the hose. 